right, next up is Gianni Storm. Is this a truth or yeah. shenanigans, Gianni? Come through. So this is some shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans. Um, I, have a, <laughs> I have a question. Are you guys ready to try some appetizing gal steak cake for the holidays? <laughs> Um, this past Monday, the FDA approved genetically engineering pigs due to the sugars um, in non-modified pigs that are actually harmful and um, can also cause uh, organ rejection. So this is the first ever approval of an animal biotechnology product for both food and as a potential for medicine. So um, genome edited pigs, sorry, provide organ free of viruses common in pigs, um, but also harmful to humans. You all know genetically engineered food, like we've all heard of that since, yep. I know Rob and I talked about this uh, sure. before the show, but we've, yep. we've said that it's been going on forever. Um, but my question to the panel is, are you guys eating geno genome edited animals voluntarily? Mm, genome edited, uh, let's start with uh, Lizzie Enders on that one. Um, so I am a pescatarian, um, but even with my pescatarian tendencies, I, I don't eat a lot of seafood anymore, not as much as I used to, um, but I definitely don't eat chicken, um, red meat, or pork, although I do cook with bacon fat. I do cook with bacon fat. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I mean, that's why. Do I want GMO salmon? Do I want GMO shrimp? You might. It might know. be tastier. Like, it might be uh, might be juicier. Who knows? <laughs> um, I, I do think it's a little weird to have genetically altered food um, to for consumption. Now, the other reasons that they were saying that it might be effective in terms of um, the purposes of drugs and the help, you know, in the medical field, I get that. But for consumption, I don't, I don't know. I like, you know, my, my, my wild caught salmon. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, Fresh. I'll jump in here. When, when I saw the story, um, I remembered that they had approved the genetically modified salmon that Lizzie keeps talking about. Um, was, I think it was about five years ago or so. And, 2015. Uh, yeah. And then uh, before that, they had approved some other GMOs for, um, for testing for drugs and animals, but the salmon was the first genetically modified thing for food, um, animal. And then I know we've had genetically modified plants, but it was definitely the first genetically modified animal. And then this is the first one for food and medical for pigs. So, you know, I'm 100% not surprised at this, but I'm about 55% okay with it. <laughs> 45% <laughs> not okay and, and for a couple of reasons one I would like the products to be marked as GMO for one because at least yeah. for a while so that we can track its actual effects because we really don't know how this GMO stuff will affect us right but yeah. as I was saying when Lizzie was talking it might be better who knows I mean the salmon grow faster and stuff but it might be better I don't know but second I'm an animal lover, <laughs> so uh, I'm one of those people who are torn over the slaughter of sentient creatures, uh, you know, for me to eat or use, but given I hypocritically still eat meat. <laughs> I was going to say, are you a vegetarian? I can't, I, I, I can't really claim that <laughs> activist role, but I still, I still love animals. I love animals, but I can't claim to be an activist. <laughs> but with that said, <laughs> the reason I'm mostly okay with this is because I'm honestly excited about the organ transplantation implications i mean given the number of pigs that are slaughtered for meat every year if you're telling me a human child could potentially survive by transplanting a pig heart i can't i'm not against that i'm just i'm just like not uh -huh. i just might not if i were eating pig i might not want to eat that same pig <laughs> that's true <laughs> but the hypocrite in me wants to point out that it, it does open the door long term towards like genetic modification of humans, farming humans for organs and so on and so forth. So not fully on board with it, but 
I'm not against it either. So I don't know. I'm I'm like in between on this. One. How are they going to genetically modify me? Let me think about that. <laughs> they could they could help Ooh. with your pancreas the next the next the next go around your <laughs> well, and so and so i'm sorry Rob, before we get to you so initially when i read this story gianni again type 1 diabetic here my mm -hmm. pancreas does not work do mm -hmm. not try to send me in holistic you know remedies or anything like i have a defective pancreas yep. i produce no insulin at all but this made me think would this be a part of any future medical um, breakthroughs mm -hmm. as it relates to mm -hmm. organs that don't work, yep. as it relates to diabetes and, you know, jump starting a pancreas or getting a new pancreas? Yeah. Because there really yeah. isn't a pancreas transplant um, operation yeah. going on. And so would this be a link to that? And I don't expect to see any of this research um, proven to be effective in my lifetime, but for the future generations, like would this be something that would help that process? So I'm definitely open to the medical side of it. Oh, Robbie? I just I just want to point out before you write me, I'm sorry, but I just saw a couple of great comments. So I saw one from Robin. Johnson, who is a veterinarian, she says HIG valves are used in heart transplants already. She also mm. said breeding is genetic modification. Just keep that in mind. Mm. So, okay, Robbie. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's it. We, we've been eating genetically modified foods for quite some time, um, and Canadian while I was doing some, whole, I mean, Canadians? worldwide, worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I want to blame everything on Canada, but go ahead. I know you do. I know you do. But that's it. In the, I think it was in the 70s uh, when they were looking at the world food shortages, uh, wheat was genetically modified. Um, so and chickens have been selectively modified, genetically modified. So if you're sitting down for breakfast of cereal and eggs, you're eating GMO foods. Um, I, don't, I don't really see the issue with this move by the FDA because it is a different breed of pig that's been engineered at Cal Al, I believe that is what the reduction is. And that's a reduction in some of those sh sugars and uh, saccharides in the pig system that'll make them more compatible for transplantation with uh, humans, which is absolutely amazing. Um, what the ham is typically sweet. It, that's, that's one of the enjoyable attributes of it. So now if we're just left with the salty, I don't know how enjoyable that's gonna be. I, I would be curious to try it out absolutely would be curious to try it out to see if there is a difference um but i i'm not lying to myself i know that i that i eat genetically modified foods on a weekly basis so why am i going to draw the line there yeah yanni storm what were your thoughts um i think that genetically modified and well i'm, I'm kind of having a difficulty is genetically modified and genetically engineered the same thing because i know modified is a general term you can modify or alter anything but engineered is okay 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 then my point then <laughs> is um i think that i wouldn't personally try it but i like that rob said that he's not going to lie to himself and act like he isn't eating GMO foods, and I don't. I know that I am. I just don't know which foods there they are. And I think that if I did know if there were labels and things like that, then I would make a conscious choice not to, only because I have a mistrust. Like I don't. I don't know what's going on. If I were to see the process, maybe of how they genetically engineer. If I were to get involved or just do my own research, Ooh, you don't on want it, to see all that. Oh, <laughs> is it nasty? Just think of Jurassic Park, where you know they've rebuilt the DNA and they're missing a piece, so they cut in a piece of the frog. <laughs> That's what they're oh, doing, but then God. implementation. But then they breed pat. They they breed after the you know. So you could have genetic mutations, and there could be there could be a lot that goes on with that that GMO food. I, honestly, I think yeah. I'm with you. Viruses. I, I don't think we really want to see what goes on and how okay. our food is prepared <laughs> for us <laughs> i don't think we really want to see all that but we, you know but we had to look at like viruses and things like that i mean we had the pandemic we, we covid was yeah. from the transfer of a virus from an animal to a human so i mean we start genetically modifying things and then 
we could have super viruses and super bugs and all that stuff. So. <laughs> Just uh, fix my pancreas. Fix my <laughs> pancreas, y'all. Fix my pancreas. That's all. All right. So <laughs> exactly. Sherry Blaine Priest says, uh, very interesting, as I have a sister with type 1 diabetes, the struggles are real, and some sort of option would be welcome. Uh, Mike Winter says, I guess nobody saw that I posted earlier about France's announcement today of approving genetic modification of soldiers, or like China. <laughs> See, be patient, wow. Mike Winter. You're the only one on here. Be patient. <laughs> Jack yeah. Ram says, you do not want to see how the sausage is made. You don't. Sausage, particularly sausage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kevin Thaxon says, swine pancreas, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Little oink, oink, Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, that was a great topic. Gianni Storm. Robbie, let's move on to yours. Lies, 